I've been reading your memoir. Yeah. And it is full of musical metaphors from literally the first page. Mm -hmm. where you talk about feeling like an orchestra conductor peering into the pit as the musicians are tuning up. Mm -hmm. And now here you are at this place at Lincoln Center where the orchestra is literally tuning up every night as your restaurant opens. And I was reading that and I was wondering if that is absolutely coincidence or if it's like a manifestation of something. Man, that's that's deep. <laughs> um, I would say coincidence, but it could be subconscious manifestation. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, when you're a leader of a kitchen, you are a conductor. Oh, yeah. You have to know what everyone is doing in the kitchen at the same time to make sure things come out properly. Yeah. Um, it's very poetic, though, that we're here in Lincoln Center. And I said that, like, yeah. we were just talking about that, like, four or five years ago. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, I just think it's poetic. I don't know if it's mm -hmm. manifestation. I don't know if it's coincidence. It's just poetic that it actually ended up happening. happening. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for me, music and food are the two things that are the most closely aligned in terms of, like, our buried memories, our really bone-deep DNA memories that kind of go back even before us, like mm -hmm. generationally. Yeah. I think we carry those two things with us. It's it's always shocking to me how, how closely they line yeah, up. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think a lot of chefs, um, once again, saying poetic, have a poetic license to say, like, food is art. Yeah. But food is art, but it's also the only art form that we ingest. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you can't have music without food. Like, right. those two things go hand in hand. Right, they And should. it's beautiful to be in this setting uh, and to be able to like do what we do every single night. Yeah. And like music, it's a little bit different every night. Exactly. <laughs> same, yeah. same ingredients, different outcome. Because we're dealing with people, Yeah. you know, and people aren't robots. Right. So every single night you're going to have a different feel. And I think like Tatiana has a life of its own. It does. Some nights it's like on 10, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, and some nights it's like a little mellow. Yeah. And I think it's like the flow of of people that come through here and the energies that are transformed mm -hmm. into what we do every single day. Yeah. You said something to me the last time we talked about um, how food serves different purposes, like mm -hmm. sometimes moment to moment mm -hmm. and kind of reading each person to know what they need that night. And I thought about that when we were eating here the other night. I really did. Um, I keep having a hard time describing the energy <laughs> here. Well, I said. What would you describe it as? It was very joyful. Yeah, it's just fun. Warm and joyful. Yeah. And, you know, I, I feel like sometimes restaurants are quiet and intimate and sometimes they are a scene. And this is just, a, it's, it feels very much, it feels like home. It feels like family. It feels like warmth. And it is. The restaurant is. And I was texting with someone last night and I said, the purpose is the purpose. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. this has intention. Yeah. There's intentionality in everything that we do, from the decor to the food to the playlists mm -hmm. to the people that work here. Um, and I think it resonates. Yeah. Rehearsal. Mm -hmm. Preparation. Exactly. <laughs> the symphony. <laughs> the symphony. You know, in the arts, we're talking, thinking so much about invitation. Mm -hmm. You know, the shift. Um, who, who's being invited? Who's being reflected? Who's being included? To whom and for whom we're telling stories. And... This space, too, I mean, there's been transformation here. Mm -hmm. Well, when this space reopened, when David Geffen Hall reopened with Etienne Charles' mm -hmm. work, which is meant to reflect the indigenous, the immigrant communities of this space. Mm -hmm. And the restaurant is doing the same thing. And I think that um, invitation permeates your experience of this space. And I want to know how it feels to you to be part of that tr transformation. I mean, it's huge. You know, when I got the call, when they asked me to open a restaurant here, I really started to research what was here before Lincoln Center. Yeah. You know, old San Juan Hill, you know, the Afro-Caribbean neighborhood that was here. And it really spoke to me. Yeah. So, like, to be a part of this resurgence of the arts with, like, culture injected into it mm -hmm. from all walks of life. Yeah. I just felt it was my purpose to be here. You know, I used to sell candy on the subway, like right outside this place. Yeah. And um, it's an honor. It's, it's a huge honor to mm -hmm. be able to do this every single night and to give access to people that normally wouldn't be here. Right. And the honor, too, I think, is to exhume that history mm -hmm. and acknowledge that history. It's really meaningful. Um, you know, I play a lot of music by black composers mm -hmm. who have been <laughs> overlooked and... Mm -hmm whose histories have been forgotten. 
And when I do that, I feel like I have two jobs. I feel like I am educating the existing listener in the world of classical music to the existence of this music. Mm -hmm. But also, and more importantly, I think I am uh, awakening mm -hmm. the listeners who are reflected in that music. Yeah. And that's also something that I feel in your food. It's autobiographical and... Yeah, I mean, we're, we're highlighting like cuisine that doesn't really get platform. Yeah. You know, we're giving a voice to the inaudible. Um, we're letting people celebrate their culture while celebrating a special experience mm -hmm. for the first time ever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a lot of times, like people of color are, are, are shunned to the mom and pop shops to like get their cuisine. And if, if they want to like propose to someone, they have to do it at a French restaurant or an Italian restaurant. Right. And they're able to do that in, in, in this space. So it's, it's just, I don't know, it's just beautiful. Every single night I come here, I just feel this energy and this resurgence yeah. um, that makes it worth it. Mm -hmm. In your book, you talk about being in DC, you're catering this dinner at the African American Museum, and it's just after Obama was elected. Mm -hmm. And you talk about that feeling so strongly, like being in this room with the, with the elite of DC, and especially the black power elite of DC, yeah. and knowing how this moment has shifted their entire reality. And I, I was reading that, I was remembering I had a concert at the Kennedy Center exactly that weekend. Really? And it was one of those legacy concerts for Benny Golson. He was, I think, turning 80 at that point. And I was sharing the stage with all of these older black jazz musicians. And there was just this... I'm, Sigh of relief. Uh, it's like, and, finally, yeah. yeah. And pride and, and like, I don't know, I mean, something completely new, a new way of inhabiting that space. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. To create that history. Yeah, I feel like this is kind of like one of those moments as well. Yeah, it really, really yeah. is. It's not a crime. We don't need to feel out of place or no. we're not welcome or we need yeah. to like dial back who we are. Yeah. You know, it's just, I. you know, the reason why I really did this this restaurant was I wanted to have other chefs look to, towards this as a beacon of light. Like we can go anywhere yeah. and do do our food and yeah. it can be accepted and it can be like done at a high level and we can still be ourselves. And um, it's just, it's all about access. It's all about having mm -hmm. a literal seat at the table. Yes. And yeah. owning that table at the same time. I have this theory <laughs> that 100 years later, this is, kind of a new renaissance. We are inhabiting, we, people of color, artists of color, creative people of color, leaders of color are inhabiting the space in a different way and able to extend mm -hmm. a welcome and able to create a network and a support system. Yeah. That's what I see when I look back at that time, when I look back at the 1920s For and sure. I look back at all the creativity. Taking risks. Yes. Risks, yeah, like right? true risks, yeah. Yes, yeah. and things that happened only because you weren't the only one in the room or at the table because mm -hmm. you could put, you know, the impulses and the inspirations and the energy together. So when I said a theory, I guess it's a theory and it's a hope yeah. <laughs> that we're at the start of that. But when I hear you talk about wanting to create a community for other chefs of color, I think that that is what we what we need to do now. I think so. I think with it, within like any industry, that's what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. You know, like I think it's easy to say like, oh, if, if I can do it, anyone can do it. But that's not that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Like there there are really like things put against us to like not not let us be. You know, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying. I know. So for me, it's like okay, I pushed through all of the stuff that was meant to keep me down, and now it's time to like okay, like look at what yeah look at what I've done. Yeah, we all can do this. Right, right. You know, like let's let's push towards that. Let's mm -hmm. look at this as a the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Um, and, and that's really my goal for this place is to like make sure other people can like see that this is a thing. And it's not just the chefs, it's also investors and mm -hmm. you know, like yeah, invest in us. Right. Because this can be successful anywhere right. in the country and the world. That's right. Well, I mean, I think when, when you talk about risk, I think that some of the things that are happening now are risks that have now proven themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, fire shut up in my bones. That's a great example. That was the first time, that was the first. And look what happened, it sold out night after night. Mm -hmm. And now the Met is making, you know, sort of adjustments to yeah. its expectations and its commitments. And um, I think this place does the same thing. Well, thank you. 
Mm. Thank you. Are there pathways in place for you if you want to mentor next generation, if you want to, you know, inhabit that role or is that something you have to build yourself? Um, it comes through like interpersonal relationships for sure. Mm -hmm. Like it's happenstance, honestly. So, like I remember the first person I started mentoring, he knocked on the back door of my first restaurant. His mom and him knocked on the back door of the mm -hmm. restaurant. And she said, can you give him a job? And I was like, uh, I mean, I guess so. Like, mm -hmm. and I met him and she's like, I gotta tell you something, he's autistic. And I was like, I, I, need, I need help. <laughs> It doesn't, yeah. you know, so like, and yeah. he's, you know, he, that was like five years ago. Mm -hmm. And then he went to the Culinary Institute of America where I, I went, he's mm -hmm. graduating in a couple of weeks mm -hmm. and I'm going to his graduation. So like there's ways, you know, mm -hmm. there's people in here that I mentor. There's mm -hmm. people that have knocked on the back door of the restaurant. There's like a scholarship program that I have at the Culinary Institute of America where oh. I read through like essays and essays yeah. and I pick a student to go on a free ride through the CIA. That's amazing and I mentor it, then they have my number. And they can That's call me if they're like, class isn't going well, what do I do? I'm like, relax, you're in school. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just fish class. <laughs> that, like, did you sharpen your knife today? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah. so there's ways to, to, to access for sure. I'm thinking about transformation mm -hmm. and how it's happening at diff so many different levels and how we all have our own little place in the, that chain. Mm -hmm. So I think as I, said earlier that one of the big goals here is for this space this is a physical entrance this is a physical invitation into a one of the most important cultural spaces in america yeah and by changing this space by changing that entryway presumably we can change who feels invited into those buildings as well mm -hmm. where is your does your role extend beyond the doors of the restaurant i think just by happenstance it does mm -hmm. for me my focus is the food yeah and this restaurant um, if that, you know, leaches out into, into other arts, yeah. that's beautiful. But for me, it's like, I focus on the food, the people that walk through these doors and making sure they're having a good time and a good meal. Well, I will tell you for myself yeah. that if I came here and I ate the way that I did the other night, mm -hmm. I would just kind of want to stay. So then what I would do I is I'd take wonder. a walk and I would, then I, something would catch my eye and yeah. I'd go buy a ticket and I'd go to the People office. have said that. Yeah. People have said that. I don't want to take credit for that. That's not that that is not um, the goal for for me in particular. I mm -hmm. think it's the goal for like this restaurant. I, I, I understand my positioning here, but my focus is the food and the people that walk through these doors. Yeah. And making sure that they leave very, very happy. Yeah. Let's just go back to music for a minute. Tell me what music you play and how you want. Yeah. What do you want people to be hearing while they're eating this food? Um, I mean, you were here. <laughs> <laughs> I play everything. 90s hip hop, yeah. 90s R&B, current hip hop, yeah. classical rock, mm -hmm. a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah, I want everyone to feel comfortable. Yeah. It's very curated. Yes. Yeah. Can I help you? Can I curate your playlist with you? Mm -mm. <laughs> it's mine and mine to give. <laughs> it's like my recipes. It, 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 yeah. It's all me. Yeah. yeah. Um, would you want to just describe one dish and like what it means to you? The dish that speaks to me the most here is the agusi dumplings. Yeah. Because it's like crab, agusi stew, encapsulated in a dumpling with like a red stew, which is like our mother sauce in Nigeria. Yeah. And it's like the perfect bite. It kind of, the mouthfeel is kind of like fufu with stew, which is like, you know, it's what we eat every single day in Nigeria. It's what mm -hmm. I ate growing up all the time. Yeah. And it's just like, it's a beautiful juxtaposition of like where I'm at in life and where we are in this center. Mm -hmm. You know, like we can innovate, but still have the flavors be authentic. Yeah. And that's what I love about that dish. I love that. Well, mm -hmm. I, that is something that I absorbed. And also I think that in music and in food, the other thing that we get to do is like the motion, the emotion yes. that's in us when we're making something, we pass that exactly. on. Exactly. You know, my mantra is if a dish has a story, it has a soul. Mm -hmm. You're not cooking for perfect seasoning. You're cooking to like really share something with someone. And that's a dish that really speaks to that. Yeah. And it yeah. speaks to that. I think that should be the prerequisite for anything you're doing. Yes. You should tell a story through any business you're doing or any product you're selling. Yeah. Because you have this attachment to it and, and it has a purpose mm -hmm. more than a dollar sign. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that the story, this is something 
very deep in in making any kind of art. Mm -hmm. When you tell your story, when you're brave enough to tell your story, you also give other people license to exactly. tell theirs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's our time. <laughs> that's it. <laughs>